Welcome to The Buck Stops Here, the official podcast of NotInHallOfFame.com, and I'm your host, Kirk Buckner, the buck, the owner, the operator of NotInHallOfFame.com, and our sister sites, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame and the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Speaking of uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they've just announced their finals for the class of 2020. You may have heard our audio show that did a bit of a preview. I can't say that I did very well in my predictions. Generally, I don't. You should check out my fantasy football. It's just as bad. So Evan Nolan's going to join us again, and we're going to take a look at who they've chosen, what this means, and who we think going forward should be the class of 2020. Without further ado, here's Evan. Four, three, two, one. Evan, good to have you back. I, I think I, I didn't I didn't do well. You you beat me again. You got seven right to my five. Yeah, but I mean, again, we're still, as I said the, what, on Thursday, we're still throwing darts in the, at a spinning wheel in the dark. So uh, we there there are some there are some ones we expect to be on there. There are two massive omissions in my in my uh, in my opinion that I can't believe didn't make the nominations list, which I'm sure we'll get to. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, overall, I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, so. I, I I think they did a fantastic job with that. Uh, like always, though, like right before we uh, press record, as they say in the business, or maybe they don't. I don't know what they say in the business. Uh, there's always people whining. Uh, you told me about something that was really disturbing, though. I don't know if you want to share that again. Uh, it's, just, it's just that, like, the. It, it seems to me that when it comes to the Rock Hall, there's so many people who are like, hey, you got to call it the Music Hall or whatever, and, and they they automatically discount anything that is not essentially what they consider to be white music. So anything that's R and B, anything that's rap, anything that has anything to do with any of those things. Like there was a guy who posted something online or one of the first commentators on Facebook said, here, I fixed it for you and had their lineup and crossed out like every person of color on the list. Um, and except for Phil line the late singer of uh, thin Lizzy. It would have been the only one, and just like, like that's the rock hall. It seems it, it, it seems in many ways that people who are so committed to rock and roll, and, and as as it's defined, the narrow definition of it is a very, very uh, white thing versus a actual music thing. Uh, actually, someone actually followed up on that about how they felt about. Uh, some of the country guys being in it, like, oh, but those country guys influenced rock and roll. And then, like, well, how do you keep R&B out? Like, it just, it bothers me because it's the same debate every single year. There are only two things that happen. One, the people either are like, hey, this is a pretty good group or I, whatever, but one's like, the rock and roll's a joke until my favorite band gets in. Right. Oh, I, two, I hate that argument. Or, or two, this isn't, rock, this isn't rock and roll. This is R&B. This is rap. And if you're like, well you don't want to have rap in there, would you keep the Beastie Boys in? And the answer is almost always yes. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, what's the difference between the Beastie Boys and Run DMC? Sadly, (laughs) we know that answer. (laughs) And yeah, yeah, it's not good. Or, 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 or like that Blondie raft. Um, I mean, uh, that's the first rap song ever to hit the charts was Blondie's rapture, right? First one to go number one. First one go number one. You're right. Rappers Delight was the first one to hit the charts, I think, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Trigger Hill Gang? Yes, that was yeah. the first so, uh, to hit the charts, and Blondie was the first, actually, rap song, or, well, a partial rap, anyway. There was never anything like it before. Unless you want to count right. uh, Conway, or not Conway, what? C.W. McCall's uh, Convoy. That's kind of a rap. Oh, uh, well. Uh, pig, the pig, pig pen and rubber duck are, are usually very, uh, very indicative of rap. They're used all the time. Those course call signs these days. So well, even have the um, musical bridge. We gotta bring this convoy. Damn it! I roll the rest. That's not a bad thing. Rocking through know. the night. The the, the eight long haired friends of Jesus in a chartreuse microbus. Right. <laughs> anyway, that's way that's way more about C W McCall than needs to be discussed this evening. Uh, the other thing before we get into it, I just want—I figured the reason you were originally calling me was that Canada actually just beat the United States men's national team in, in soccer. So congratulations to you with your two nothing victory. I was—I was not even aware of that. I—I ha- I was watching uh, the obliteration of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ah, 
Oh, it's not over yet. It's a seven four. So oh, was it seven four? Okay, I I, I kind of turned that off and was starting. I was doing some Netflix and chill and drinking. Ah, well, as as someone who is used to be a partial season ticket holder for the Washington Nationals uh, back ten years ago when they were absolutely terrible, uh, it's a little bit weird that they're even this close to the. Uh, to the World Series. I mean, uh, you go there still, and they are, my wife always used to joke that the main event that they always said was the uh, president's race. <laughs> so she's like, she's like, we're not here for the baseball. We're here to see uh, Teddy Roosevelt not win the race. So that was always her favorite part. Well, it's better than when, but anyway, it's better when I've taken my, we're, we're, my wife to a game. Oh, she just looks forward to the concession stand. Yeah, well, I can take my wife in, to any sporting event as long as I get her nachos. So it works out pretty well. Nice. So we should just uh, hit, just uh, start yeah, can, uh, raffling we're, we're like them all off. We should probably get to what everybody's actually here to listen to us. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna. I, so I'm on there on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame site. So I'll just go in the order that they've got them up. Not that there seems to be any particular order to this. Well, I guess they no, they've got that in alphabetical order. So we'll just go that way. Uh, you called it. Uh, that was your first one that I didn't get. Uh, Pat Benatar. Yeah, and Pat Benatar is going to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. This year. I agree. Uh, like, like, even that guy who crossed stuff out, he also crossed out every woman except for Pat Benatar. Um, Pat Benatar is rock and roll to everybody. Um, and there are certain people, once they're up, you're like, yeah, they're just getting in. Mm-hmm. And she is certainly one of them. And she deserves it. I mean, she's been eligible for over a decade at this point. Um, and she's... I mean, yeah, there, there's there's no question. Pat, uh, there's This is actually, I think, a fairly easy rock hall class for me in order to call. I think there's an easy five for getting in, and Pat Benatar is the first of them. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that one. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if we sort of agree on some of those others. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm very, very happy for her. Uh, I see, though, if she gets in, uh, she wouldn't be getting in alone, actually. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, so it was. Uh, uh, I'm blanking on his name there. I was just reading that too. And the, why? Why is it I can't remember it? Well, it, it, it's just interesting that Pat Benatar is not going in alone, but Steve Miller did. That's like, so Steve true. Miller Band oh had 137 God. members over the years, um, and and but Steve Miller got going alone without the band. Uh, but Pat Benatar, who we almost all think of as a solo artist, was. Uh, was actually going in. I can't remember the guy's name either. Yeah. I'm not familiar enough with who he is to. But to yeah, know a long time exactly collaborator. And yeah, no, it's it's that's that was to me the most interesting part of actually all of this was was that was that uh, decision. But you know, like I don't have a problem with it. It's just another one of those weird things they do. Yeah, it, there, there's never any rhyme or reason. Although it was nice actually for. Uh, well, the Rolling Stone put out who would actually go in with each band. Like that was out immediately, which is one of the good things that I think is connected with Jan, the only good thing about Jan Winter still being involved. Mm-hmm. At least we knew who was and who was not going in. Well, it, uh, it, with each group. Yeah, and it eliminates or it doesn't eliminate it. It's uh, it answers questions right away, and it sort of eliminates some of those awkward conversations down the road. Right, and then the Rock Hall can always change their mind. Because they do that all the time. Absolutely. All right, so Pat, we both think is getting in. Uh, this one, uh, uh, I have to leave my personal feelings out, out the door here. I hate the Dave Matthews Band. I just said I'm going to leave my feelings at the door, and I just said what I did. Uh, yeah, my, my, my wife would agree with you. She says that they have one song, and they just divide it up like 14 times and make an album. <laughs> um, it worked for ACDC. Yeah, yeah well, well. I, I'm someone who has been to uh, three Dave Matthew concerts in my life, uh, and I still would not compare. It. I would still not put Dave Matthews Band and ACDC in the same uh, <laughs> in the same sentence uh, in terms of the rock hall stuff. Um, I actually I know that a lot of people had uh, as Dave Matthews Band as eligible last year. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, when I did my research, I decided that this was their first year being eligible. Regardless, one way or the other, they are eligible now. Um, I actually had them on my countdown, which I still haven't gotten the final part to you yet. Mm-hmm. But I actually had them at number seven mm. on my uh, countdown of stuff for this year. Um, I just had trouble seeing Dave Matthews Band get in before like Fish, like like another because they're kind of a they're they're a popular jam band, but they're 
a jam band. Right. It, 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 it'd almost be like um, Mumford & Sons when they're eligible getting up. They're a jam band that you either love or you hate. Um, and I'm, I'm someone who happens to very much like them. But I'm a, I was a little surprised to see out of the 51 bands that I had, only two of them made it, and it was my number two and my number seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was a little bit interesting to me. Pretty sure but, we're going to um, get to that number one. <laughs> Well, yeah, number two, number one was it? Number one for me was not there. I can't. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, and I think we're going to be oh, discussing yeah. that uh, shortly. Uh, so, yeah. Dave, so Dave Matthews, as much as I don't like them, I don't have a problem with this either. You yeah. know, I can separate the fact that it's not my type of music, and I certainly recognize that it is a t- that they fill a void. And you know they're they're a very popular group, and they do things on their terms. I respect that. Uh, I I agree with all that, and I don't think they're going to be getting in this year out of what, out of what this nomination. Well, who got nominated is going to have a very big pull as to as uh, part of getting into rock hall is who you're up against. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like there are too many other compelling arguments on this list for Dave Matthews Band to get through this time. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with, with you on that one. I'd be very shocked <laughs> if they got in. If they do, okay, uh, it won't bother me, but I don't see them getting in this year. Yeah, it, it, it would actually probably bother me a little bit, even though, again, I love them, for them to get in this early mm-hmm. on their first attempt. You know what I mean? Like, if, if they're, like, six or seven years, that was their first attempt they got in, that wouldn't bother me. Right. But either year one or year two for them, and it's their first time on the ballot, and with all these other names on there, it would bother me a little bit, even as someone who really enjoys them, mm-hmm. uh, the, if they got in that early. So. Okay, so moving on. Uh, you called this one. I did not. Uh, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Yeah, you, you picked the Smiths for this I did. spot, right? I did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would yeah, and then, love and, to see Depeche right. Mode get in. Uh, I'm not sure if they will, but I think there's a pretty there's a better chance than before. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. It's a better chance than before. It's possible they won't get in, but I like this this breakdown for Depeche Mode's chances of getting in because their time period there's almost no contemporaries of theirs on this list. No, there, there, there's not. And actually, since, since you sort of brought that up, I. That's what, one thing that I've definitely noticed here, and I wonder if that's under the new management, they might look into creating this, like a, like a senior committee, because there's nobody representing right. the 60s here. This is the, I, right, yeah. I, I was looking at that. The, the earliest band on here is probably, well, MC5, right? Mm-hmm. Other than MC5, is, uh, I don't think going to be getting in. Like the, All these are mid-70s bands and beyond. There's no 50s bands. There's no 60s bands. Uh, this is, it's an interesting list. But yeah, you're right. There's no there's no Paul Revere and the Raiders like we talked about. You mm-hmm. had um, Tommy James and yep. Shondells, which would have been a great choice. They're not here. There's no Herman's Hermits. There's there's nobody. There's no Spinners who are like the very end of the 60s right. and end of the 70s. They're, there's this, they're not there, which it's an interesting thing because apparently only one person changed a nominating committee. There's now one more woman, apparently, a woman from Los Angeles who has not yet been identified or named. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, never uh, change, uh, Rock Hall. Keep that transparency open. Yeah. Um, but but it, it, so it's not like they, the nominee committee got significantly younger, uh, but it appears as though some of the – they've moved their focus from the 60s to, to moving more towards the – uh, 80s and 90s, and then grabbing those 70s bands that they've missed mm-hmm. with their with their focus on the bands of their youth from the people who had set up the hall. I, I could sort of see them all of a sudden, out of the blue, just announcing a senior can a senior induction without sort of like talking right. about it. Much like you don't right. know who's yeah. going to win the Ahmed Aragon Award. Apologies if I said his name wrong. Yeah, he, he's no longer with us, so I don't think he'll be offended. Well, maybe the kids. I don't know. I, I'm a Canadian. I apologize <laughs> for everything. You're, you're, you're confused by the lack of use in the word. <laughs> well, I remained in the Commonwealth, so at least... We, well, actually, I don't know what the hell people are saying down here half the time. My God, the slang. 
But that's another story for another show. Funny, though, the more I drink, the better I understand people. Hmm. Well, there's a, that's, that's what I call a reason for more scientific experimentation. <laughs> you, just get, you have a hypothesis. You just got to test it. Uh, absolutely. So, and, it, and, and you need enough data points for it to be scientifically significant or statistically significant. So that, that means drinking. That, that's why we're day. friends, and even though we've never met. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, so. th- th- there's two that I was super happy about. Actually, three. Uh, but so th- that's next up here. The Doobie Brothers. I'm very happy for them. I th- mm-hmm. I think that they're going to get in. Is what they're going to waltz into the hall. Yes. They yeah they they're like I said I think there's five who have a ridiculously good shot. The Pat Benatar and the Doobies are the first. Mm-hmm. I, two. I totally We're, agree. The, 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 the Doobies are on that list of seventy fans, like we said before. Where as soon as they got nominated, mm-hmm. there was no way that um, that like when Roxy Music was up last year, I told you there's no way they're not getting in. When Dire right. Straits was up the year before, when um, Electric like Orchestra got up. Like as soon as they Chicago. got nominated, or Steve Miller Band, although it just ended up being Steve Miller. As soon as as soon as they're nominated, like yeah, of course they're in. Yeah, Chicago like, was another one like that. Hits in the 70s. Chicago mm-hmm. was another one. Cheap Tricks, another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cars took a little longer than I anticipated, but they got in too. It's just like once they're up, you're like, oh yeah, they're just getting in. It, it's just a matter of getting people through the very narrow tip of the funnel. Yep. In order to get up there, and the Doobies have their shot, and they're going to get in. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, so up next is a minor surprise, uh, the lowest ranked on our site. Uh, and again, I don't have a problem with this one either. I'm actually, she keeps plummeting actually on, on the website based on votes that come in and that's Whitney Houston. Yeah, it's, it's interesting cause she's, she is, they only ended up with, um, three women on this ballot. Mm-hmm. There are 69, there are 69 people. And only three of them are women. So we got 66 guys and three women after the whole we're changing things. It's very diverse sort of situation. Uh, and like like we talked about, it's not like there's a shortage of women. They couldn't be nominating um, between people who are not on the list as we did before. Tina Turner, Cher, uh, Diana Ross, Carly Simon, um, Cindy Lauper. There was some talk about her beforehand, possibly because of also her success with Kiki Boots. Um, the Go Go's, the Shangles, the Go Go's, the Bangles. Yep. Uh, you, I brought up the Eurythmics. You, uh, you brought Mary Wells. Mm. Like, there's just so many of them, and I'm glad that Whitney Houston is an interesting one to pick. Um, she's along the diva side of things, for which we haven't had we haven't had diva in a, quite a while, really. Um, Not, and it's it's an interesting, really interesting ever? combination. I don't know if she's going to actually get in. But it's nice to see her as a as an option coming forward here. So does that mean Bobby Brown shows up at the ceremony? Uh, he, maybe. I don't know. Or do Bell Biv and DeVoe come in his stead? Well, you know, it, it'll be his prerogative if he decides to show up if she gets in. Wow. Uh-huh. Wow, nice, nicely done. A, g- a good use of new of a new edition line, my friend. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I do, I do think that guy is poison, though. So. <laughs> oh, oh. So I had to go back to Bill Booth to vote. Yeah. So well, um, well, hopefully we don't get cut off from Mr. Telephone Man. All right, now yeah, we're just yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of dropped the ball on that one. Uh, but Whitney, uh, I don't. I, I don't know if she's she's going to get in. Uh, she's been getting a lot of the – if you just look at the general articles, a lot of them sort of like put her front and center. Yeah. But, but I mean she's – there's no doubt that she is not the most talented. It was no more than the third most talented female singer in terms of just range and ability and everything from the like last 20 years of – the last century mm-hmm. like her, her ability to sing was absolutely incredible oh for sure uh, she yeah she and she had hit after hit after hit and some of which are more on the rock side a little bit more on the rock pop side of things than just the straight pop side of things um of course are the big ballads from the from uh, that song from uh, the bodyguard mm-hmm. and a few others but um yeah, she. I mean, she's somebody who it was a little surprising. It took her this long. I wonder if she were still alive and would have have helped her get on sooner. Um, but 
yeah, it's it's good to see it's good to see that they are looking for more women and again more people of color because both of those things have been lacking uh, in, in the last yeah and, ten and, twelve years yeah and I, I sort of like uh, actually I'm, gl- I'm sort of glad you said that like in the last ten to twelve years yeah that would be uh, definitely be true in terms of people of color overall uh, you know especially in the early years of the inductions I don't think that was the case. But in the last... No, I agree with that. Yeah, but in the last uh, decade or so, yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, so... so uh, two uh, metal bands. I'm I'm shocked. In, in, in a good yeah. way. And I love it. Uh, Judas Priest is up again. Yep. Uh, are you going to do both? Do you want to talk about them both at once or one at a time? Actually, you know, let's do them both. Yeah, Judas Priest and Motorhead. Which is, when I said yeah. there was two, I was super happy about Motorhead is that is was the second one, like just yeah, mo- so happy. Motorhead is someone who it would be. I didn't think I thought it would take a lot longer to show up on the list. It's again, it's we talked about it last week. It's it's terrible that Lemmy's not here to just to just give a verbal flip off to the audience there. Oh, um, oh. How, how cool! But, just like closing off with Ace of Spades. Yeah, but um. Uh, it makes me sad. I'm sorry. Um, no, me too. But I, me too. It's, but I actually think, can we talk about somebody who, one of the two bands that I that uh, didn't make it, that surprised me, because I think it makes a big difference here. Yeah, we both picked them. On the list. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. And, that, and that's, Mo- that's Motley Crue. Right. Like that, I'm stunned. But, yeah, I'm absolutely stunned. They were number one by far in the hall vote, like in the, in the um, actual hall itself where the people could come in. They were running away with it. They had the uh, the documentary you talked about, mm-hmm. uh, and it just seemed like all of this momentum was building towards Motley Crue. The fact they are not there, and the fact that Motorhead is on the ballot with them, I think almost guarantees Judas Priest getting in. I yeah, because the, one of these two have to right, right. But the the rock the rock block always votes together. Mm-hmm. That's why in the last few years we've had Def Leppard and we had Bon Jovi before that. We had Journey before that. We had Deep Purple before that. They start working their way through and voting as a block. This, if they don't this, have Motley Crue to vote for, they're going to finally go to one of the metal bands. You just put and Journey no offense, in the same no category with Motorhead. Motorhead. It was absolutely one of my favorite bands of all time. Mm-hmm. But the priest should be in first. No, and I don't have a problem with that. And if they're sort of like going backwards, writing some wrongs, that's fine, but one of these two better get in. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But my point is, if the Rock Block is going to vote for somebody, they're going to pick one of them. Yeah, I just got. I, I, I got to go and back to here, I, Evan. Though, did you sort of like start a whole sentence that sort of like had Journey and Motorhead in the same block? No, 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 no. I had the Rock Block who they voted for. Okay, no, just it's. You know, I don't no, know. I, 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 I don't. I don't have Journey and Motorhead in the same block. I, my point is, there Motley Crue is in the block with okay, right. Journey, and because there's nobody in the Motley Crue spot, so guys who vote for the rock bands, because Def Leppard is not in the, is in more with Journey than it is with right. than it is with Motorhead or, or Judas Priest. But because there's no popular big arena rock band for mm-hmm. the rock guys to all vote for, they're going to go to one of the metal bands, is my point. Yeah, and if they don't, you know, you got another thing coming. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. Um, but, but anyway, but, but if they have the two to pick between Judas Priest and Motorhead, I think they're going to pick Judas Priest. I think that the way this ballot is designed has made it much easier for Judas Priest to get in this year mm-hmm. than they've had on the previous than the last time they're on a ballot, which was two years ago, right? Right. right. So I, I think I think this is a very good ballot for Judas Priest. Um, particularly since Motorhead is there just because there's a comparison and uh, I think most people would agree that Judas Priest was a slightly superior band. And if there's only one to vote for and they're superior than the other one, I think it's gonna help them get in. I actually think Judas Priest makes it makes it out of this group. No, I I agree with you. Uh, one that I think it, it, I think it's their time uh, coming up next, and the one that I'm championing the most, even though this is the group that cares the least, Kraftwerk. I really think this is yeah. their time. Yeah. So Kraftwerk is interesting because there's um, Kraftwerk, and can I just bring up the one? The next one I think is MC5, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's just take the two of them at the same time. Sure. Because. Um, because Kraftwerk and MC5 are not the same band at all, but I'm not, I'm not comparing <laughs> them in any way. 
Uh, but other than the fact that they're both people who the nominated committee believes needs to be in the hall, mm-hmm. and let's just say the hall has a certain degree of a lack of transparency. Would you agree with that sen- sentence? I would agree with that very much, yes. And I think them, and actually uh, one of the other female artists we haven't talked about yet, the three of them have been up a bunch of times, and I think even if they, one of them doesn't get in, they'll fudge it so one of them gets in. Oh, because they would so never think, do that. No, they would never do that. Just, uh, yeah. The, the, Dave Clark the, 5. <laughs> the, the uproar on Fox News a few years ago when Dave, the Dave Clark 5 was allegedly uh, passed over for Grandmaster Flash – uh, and that how this was somehow a conspiracy. Um, <laughs> just it just goes to show whatever Dave Clark Five got in the next year. But I, re- um, I remember watching them open for uh, Grandmaster once. That was uh, it was quite the concert. <laughs> Which is the same five in the background. I'm not <laughs> yes. sure. Yeah, um, yeah. We we couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Well, sometimes they're furious, and sometimes they're just singing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but, good. but 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 so that, that that other can I bring up the other one as well, the, which is Rufus and Chaka Khan. Absolutely, so the, 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 for sure. three, the the three of them have been nominated at least. Uh, let's see, it's six for Kraftwerk, five for MC Five, and four for Rufus and Chaka Khan. Although Chaka Khan's been nominated on her own separately too, so she's mm-hmm. up above five nominations. One of these three is getting in. I don't know how they may do a musical excellence thing. Uh, just get MC Five in. Something along those lines, but one of these three is getting in. I'm not, just not sure which one. Yeah, but how do you put one of those ones in musical excellence? I see that that going to Todd Rundgren. I think it goes to Todd Rundgren too. My point though is they may they may fudge it mm. in order to get one of them in and off the list. Right. Yeah, because these are these are acts that definitely they know belongs, and then for whatever reason they just can't get in there. Well, you can't get Crawford in because nobody knows any Crawford songs. They, they know them all because other people have used them, sampled them for pretty much every other popular song we've had. That is true. But they but they can't pick them on their own. I, I was so reading, that's Kraftwerk's uh, problem. I was reading somewhere that in terms of uh, sampling, uh, Kraftwerk is actually number two all time in samples. Uh, and number one uh, is James Brown. Oh, I was going to say Rick James, but James Brown, that's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, actually, it's... Uh, there's a like living in Barbados. I've been sort of introduced to the history of bar of uh, Bajan music, as they call it here, and mm-hmm. uh, so I'm listening to some of the some of the old classic stuff, and it's like, oh my god, James Brown's all over this. Mm-hmm. Like just listening to that, but I digress. Uh, so I guess moving on, uh, Nine Inch Nails, uh, what the one man operation of Trent Reznor, who famously not said I uh, it's, I don't care about it and then showed up at the ceremony inducting someone right so here he is it didn't shock me yeah it, I'm not shocked he's there either yeah, it's his it's his third time it's been a few years um, I think I brought him up last year as somebody I thought right. might come back because it's been since 2016 since he's been on here he's on in 15 and he's first eligible in 16 and now again 2020 I think there's a possibility he gets in. I think this is a slightly tough group for Nine Inch Nails. I right. think it would be a lot easier to put Nine Inch Nails in with the industrial rock if Crawford is in. Um, it seems backwards not to do that. Uh, but uh, they're certainly deserving one of the most influential bands of the 90s and into the two, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have absolutely no problem with him being here. I think... This might be a situation they finish eighth or ninth, and he finishes eighth or ninth in this thing. He'll be close, and it wouldn't shock me if he got in, but I think he's going to be just that side. Right. No, I totally agree. Uh, it's one of those things where I can't sort of see him getting through this because not only that, too, I mean, like, even though it's not the same type of music, he kind of has the same similar vibe as a lot of, of the metal bands, too. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that doesn't help him yeah. either. Yeah, yeah, the the two metal bands does not help Nine Inch Nails. Like I said, this I honestly think that part of getting in is who you're on the ballot with. I said that with last year with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Remember, I said this mm-hmm. may be Richard Seymour's best chance to get in because there's no other defensive lineman. Where it turns out this next year, there's also going to be no other defensive lineman, so he's probably getting in. <laughs> um, but but that that that's a big help if there's nobody who's blocking you or the only people who might be blocking you, you're considered to be better than it's a lot easier for you to get in. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, th- I don't see Reznor getting in this year. Uh, hope whether he whines about it or I, I don't know. He's an interesting character. Yeah. I, I, I will admit, though, a lot of the time, I'll, I'll rewatch the Social Network movie that he scored just to listen to a score. Really? Yeah, it, it's it's a very it's a very unique, uh, very, very unique. I don't know if he was nominated for an Oscar. Not that I really care about Oscars, but right. Yeah. Uh, so we've already t- t- uh, sort of touched upon Rufus and Chaka Khan, uh, Todd Rundgren. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I I apologize. I just uh, leapfrogged the notorious B.I.G. Yeah, he's getting it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, so, yeah, he is. I mean, it, it's not even... I, I think there's... If there's anyone that there's no doubt about in my mind, it's Biggie. Yeah, absolutely. Now he And he was number two on my list of uh, mm-hmm. bands eligible for... Or art, artists eligible for the first time this year. And he was only number two because I was convinced number one was going to be even more likely to get in. And there's a slight chance based on what they did last year, that LL Cool J was still going to be the, the rap nominee. Oh, um, but uh, LL has to wait the year. Uh, there are a whole bunch of people online who are upset that it was Biggie and not uh, Tribe Called Quest or Wu-Tang or whatever. And I'm like, guys, it's just get Biggie in and worry about arguing everybody else later. Like, put the one rap act in, get him in, don't worry about it, and then we can have the discussion next year as to who's next. Yeah, and um, I, he's a lock. He's a total lock, and that's the one yeah. I see a lot, a lot of pushback. I'm sure that X that you saw on on that guy's post was probably the biggest on over him. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. He was that was that was crossed out very very heavily. Yeah, no, so. I'm, I'm sure it was. And for those who we, think we, we, Whitney oh. Houston was also scratched out very heavily as well. So. Oh my god. It's. Yeah, I, I would love for them to all sort of like clearly define rock music, but they can't. I mean, I mean, you just have to understand that they used rock as colloquialism for what was popular when the guys who made the hall were kids. Mm-hmm. And as music has developed over time, like there's R and B beats and there's blues and all the other things that that rock came out of. Those things still exist, but other things came in to influence rock. Like at some point, Lincoln Park is going to come up, right? If you don't have rap in there, is Lincoln Park automatically knocked out? Like it's. There are just so many. There are just so many groups that people are like, "Oh yeah, that's rock," but they they can't exist without the influence of these other bands, and that's that's what this whole thing comes down to. Who has influenced other artists to make great music? And if you can't tell the story of music, and maybe it needs to be the popular music hall of fame as opposed to rock hall of fame, but you just have to understand the time period when it was named. The rock hall sounds better than the popular music hall, you know. Um, and if you have to accept the fact that music has developed over time and anything that has gone into making the way things are, because this is ultimately a subjective hall of fame. This isn't like baseball where you're like, this guy hit four or 500 home runs. He's in right. Uh, or, and didn't use steroids, excuse me. You can hit over 500, but if you use steroids, you're screwed. <laughs> um, but, um, but this is ultimately an objective hall of fame. Absolutely. But it, yeah. it, it comes down to what the history of music is within popular culture. That started as rock. It's actually started as R and B, uh, R and B and or blues and country and R and B all combined, and all of a sudden we ended up with rock music, and then that all just developed from there. So Biggie is as important to the development of music as anyone from the '90s, legitimately anyone. And he is. It's it's so true, uh, and that's always been sort of the problem when people are sort of like looking at that in some kind of historical perspective. They can't. It's something. It's something that you can't define. And even when you try to use like a, a quantitative stat, like, and you see this all the time. Well, so and so sold so many albums and it went gold. Okay, so. Right. You know what does that yeah. necessarily mean? Just meant a lot of people like right. that at that particular time. Did that necessarily push music. Uh, I think I read somewhere, and I, whether this is true or not, I'm not sure anymore, uh, but like the biggest hit in terms of the 70s was uh, Debbie Boone's You Light Up My Life. hmm You don't even hear that on soft music stations. Right. It, 
when's the last time you even heard that in an elevator? You don't. Uh, the last time I heard the song, I could tell you, I was actually flipping channels through something, and my my TV got stuck on one of those uh, like re- re- CD collections of like the seventies. Oh, and, that was uh, one of them. So I, li- I listened for a little bit, and actually, you light up my life by De- life by Debbie Boone was the song that was playing at the time when the time life, whatever soft oh, music God, classic that thing. Been... That was literally the last time I heard that song. How many years ago would that have been when they were trying to push that time life stuff? They still are on certain channels. Oh, really? Where I have it. Oh, at least oh. on at least on uh, on Dish Network, you still get them. Okay, so I, I'm I'm using my little um, cheater thing. So uh, down here. Ah, well, there you go. But yeah, they they still have them here. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean but even think of like a very popular musician right now is Halsey. I really love Halsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Halsey has that song "We Are the New Americana," and she says, "We're the New Americana," raised on Biggie and Nirvana. Like, she's talking about growing up, all of her generation, the two bands they cared about were Biggie and Nirvana, and that was it. Like, there he is. Just put him in there. I know that Halsey's opinion doesn't necessarily count for everything, but it's a hard statement to counter to counter man. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, an accurate statement. I mean, Tupac got in the first time, Biggie's getting in the first time. We've talked way too much about this. He's just getting in. Yeah. All right, so we only so. have three left. Uh Soundgarden, who, pleasant surprise, very happy to see that, I guess took the rage against the machine spot. Yeah, I, I wonder if Tom Morello just said, hey guys, cool it. Let's get let's get somebody else up there. I honestly think so. I think he did, because they got, Rage got, uh, got two in a row, and then, because when he got on, they did the G, one Jade's Addiction, then we got two Rages in a row, mm-hmm. and now we got Soundgarden. Um, I think that's I think that's great. I don't know. Soundgarden is someone who absolutely deserves to be in. They're going to be real close. Yeah. I don't know if they get in from this group, but it's going to be close for them getting in. I, I think it'll be tough. I think it'll be tough because the next one coming up, I think they're getting in. That's uh, first time, long time. T Rex. All right, can you explain? I know you. I I know Bang a Gong and and a few of their other songs. Mm-hmm. I'm T Rex. When I look at your list, I think they were what fourteen on your list. I uh, yes, they are. Now keep in can mind though, explain- b- before before I go in there, the the list originally I sort of came up with, and then it changes based on votes. So right. it's not necessarily my list. It's more of an amalgamation. All right. Well, can you still, as someone who knows enough about T-Rex, but mm-hmm. hasn't exactly been a massive, massive fan of theirs. Can you explain to me why they're so high on your list? Yeah, I can. Uh, the whole glam rock scene is essentially them, Bowie, and uh, Sweet. Uh, t- they, they sounded dirtier. They were literally, I don't know, it sounds sort of like corny, uh, just this sweet type of music that didn't really exist at the time. And so many other bands cited them as influence. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, th- to me, to me, they're. I still think the weirdest nomination for a while for another band that you apparently love, and I, I just <laughs> don't understand their thing, which is Pro Call Harem. Like I, I yeah. never got the Pro Call Harem nomination, and this one, there's so many people like, yeah, T Rex, and they just to me are like, they're kind of another '70s band. They're not particularly to me as someone who was born in 1979. A band yeah, they, who they, I'm like, oh yeah, that in. I gotta go get their greatest hits album. Full disclosure, I actually was wearing their t-shirt there yesterday when I was out and about. Well, my, my son was wearing a T-Rex t-shirt too, but it was like a dinosaur driving a truck. Well, so, so. was mine. No, I just... So, uh, so it's essentially, it's, essentially, it's their glam rock yeah. triumvirate with Sweet and, and Bowie. I, that and another band I just absolutely love, uh, Slade. And Slade, okay. Yeah, uh, so like I mean, that was sort of like a big part of that. Uh, okay. I, I think they could get in, I'm not sure, because uh, the only one that could stop them is actually the last band left, Thin Lizzy. Yeah, Thin Lizzy uh, is is a very, very good chance of getting in. Um Phil Lynott is one of the most beloved lead singers of the 70s, though he's then not been with us for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, one of the few, the only, one of the few bands on here who's actually fronted by a person of color, uh, even if he's Irish. 
Um, Though, how many people who listen to that music actually knew that? Not a whole hell of a lot of that. Not, not, not a whole hell of a lot. Actually, I don't think I knew that until I, I used to do, um, in, my dad at one point had um, prostate cancer. So every November I used to have to do a 30 best mustaches from some genre. And I did music one year. I saw Phil Lynott, he was one of the earlier ones from music. And I was like, I had absolutely no idea. I absolutely didn't know he was Irish either. But um, yeah, I think Finn Lizzie has a very, very good shot of getting in. I, the Doobie Brothers being on here actually hurts him a little, but I don't think a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not, sh- I'm not sure. My opinion on T Rex is is a little bit. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how, where to put T Rex, so I'm not sure how T Rex affects him either. But I think that they have a decent shot of getting in. If they go to seven bands, I think T Rex gets in. Which could if happen. They, we don't know. If they, if they, yeah, if they have six, I'm not sure. But well, I think a seven spot almost guarantees that uh, Thin Lizzy will be in. I gotta say, kudos to us because we came, we did a nomination thing of sixteen. We did, yeah. Hey, that that actually we should get more points for it. Forget how many we got right. Uh, just the fact <laughs> I think, that we yeah, knew well, that they're going to be sixteen this year is uh, amazing. Because there are fifteen last year, twenty the year before, twenty year before that. There actually hasn't been sixteen nominees since. Uh, 2014. Yeah, well, either way, I so, lose. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, um, it, we, we didn't talk about Todd Rundgren. We kind of uh, glossed over him. Yeah, uh, um, I, I think I, I think Rundgren also has a very good shot of getting in. Um, I thought he was getting in you know, last year because there's an outcry for Warren Zevon all over the place, and I think Rundgren has Zevon's spot on the ballot. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting Rundgren in and out of the way, whether it's through the musical excellence as we talked about before, just straight in, opens it up to the opens up the songwriter or the, the male soloist um, category up again for Zivon and whoever else you want to throw out there. Phil Collins, uh, I don't know. You just pick oh, pick your favorite Collins. guy who sang songs, um, and uh, I think I think that that will help. But it, it may be the back door as we've talked about before. All right, here's my segue. Phil Collins did open up for Timmy in the Lords of the Underworld. Wow! In South Park. In South Park, yes. Yes, and but did, but, but, but then, didn't they open up for Faith Plus One? Uh, no, they did that, not. That's that also South Park. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I know. And yeah, no, totally. Uh, <laughs> no, I know exactly who that is. Uh, what do you mean I wanted something in mirth? I win the bet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the reason I bring that up is in a couple days, the fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame brings uh, out their yes. finalists. Which is when you're going to be coming back next week, but you don't even know it, but you are. Oh, okay. Good to know. It's, it's, good, it's good to know. As long as I get to talk about Josie and the Pussycats, we're fine. <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> talking about them for what other purpose? Uh, I'm, well, I mean... Isn't that just a normal dinner conversation with you? Not in the Caribbean. Well, probably true. <laughs> Josie from outer space. I always liked it. I liked it better when they were in outer space. I don't know why, but I did. Mm-hmm. It's like I always liked uh, most of those Hanna Barbera cartoons better when they were the wacky races. So, I, I, I saw uh, a whole YouTube thing about sort of like how Hanna Barbera just sort of like fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, yeah. There was a, yeah. What, whatever happened to them? There was another studio too. They were talking about. I saw something the other day. The guy who did American Tale and a few others. Like what happened to that studio? Uh, but anyway, so back back to this list. I, I told you earlier. I think I have the the, the single funniest um, class I could come up with out of this. Yes. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. If they elected uh, Motorhead, mm-hmm. Notorious B.I.G. Soundgarden, Thin Lizzy, Whitney Houston, and Kraftwerk. So we'd have five groups whose lead singer or main person is not alive anymore. <laughs> and Kraftwerk is <laughs> the only one with a technical lead singer. I think it would be absolutely hilarious if that's who they, they ended up with. They, they could just sort of like do a whole thing of, the, of just holograms right behind Kraftwerk sort of like doing their thing. Yeah, they, they can do holograms of the lead singers of those other groups. But yeah, but no Lemmy, no no Biggie, uh, no uh, Soundgarden's Perry Farrell, right? Uh, no no Phil Lynott, no Whitney Houston. Perry Farrell. And then, Dench, and then it's Kraftwerk. You mean Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell, I say Perry Farrell. I'm sorry, Chris Cornell. 
Um, yeah, so none of those guys, and then just that's just Crawford guys. I, That'd be and, kind of hilarious. And oh, there's one other thing we have to go we have to go through. Uh, the one who's going to be number one on your new list, and the one we both oh, pegged. Yeah. Oasis. Yeah, like, I was yeah, surprised, I, I, I but then when I thought about it, okay, so they're getting the Radiohead treatment. Yeah, um, I, with just wanting to sell tickets and everything, I'm surprised they're not here. Like I said, I the, their spot, I think, like the Dave Matthews Band, right? Doesn't Dave Matthews Band have Oasis' spot? It's hard to put them in the same sentence, but yeah. But I mean, just yeah, time period yeah. wise. Yeah. Because I wouldn't say Soundgarden. Soundgarden's like a whole different thing from Oasis, and not that not that Dave Matthews necessarily is, but Dave Matthews and Oasis are probably played on the same station more like more often than Soundgarden and Oasis would be. So it's it's interesting that they're not here. It's it's actually very very surprising to me that they're not here. Um, no, for me too. I mean, like, I, I think I'm shocked that they're not, but I, like, do you think part of it is the whole commercial thing? Cause they're not going to show up together. Yeah. But I mean, they have, like I said, they just have five other bands who their lead person is not, he is not dead and one is Kraftwerk. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think having the drama from a live Oasis guy is not showing up. Brothers Gallagher, then who cares? But it, I mean, it's still driving. People still want to sing Champagne Supernova. Um, and I'm a little surprised that the, some of these other bands that we had here, particularly uh, Usher, is another one who I thought might show up. Uh, or Outcast might mm-hmm. be one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 it's, surpri- it's shocking to me that Oasis is in here. Yeah, not, that was sort of like my biggest takeaway was that they weren't, well, two, two takeaways. One we have already talked about. Uh, pretty much no one realistically before 1970. And mm-hmm. Oasis, which seemed like a no-brainer to me. But I, I'm wondering if the no one before 1970 is just allowing them now with the new people in charge to do a seniors committee. That's what I'm hoping. Like, That's what I took yeah, away from I, that. I, yeah, having 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 a seniors committee is something that makes sense for everybody. Like all the other sports have it, or the sports have it. This isn't a sport, except to us. <laughs> um, yeah. But but yeah, it seems like something that that they should do. And just by not having it before 1970 or even even like 72, really uh, allows them to be like, hey, we can do this whole 50 years from your first album thing. Because right now, 2020, we're like 1970 would be your first album. Right. Oh, no, sorry, 1969 for the 2020 class because 50 years plus one. Yeah, yeah, so don't, don't, don't age me because I'm, I'm born in 72, so. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, so the 1969 and before, now we can have a seniors committee and then just vote, everyone vote up and down as to whether Paul Revere and the Raiders get in. Um. I think I think that's something that they should do, and something that this this list allows them to do. Saying, "Hey, well, we didn't have anyone who's nominated before 1970, and we started before 1970, and there's still bands we want to put in there. So, how do we do this? Mm-hmm. Here's how we announce it." That's so, what I'm hoping they do, and they very well could. And, and if they do, it's not like we're going to see it coming. Right. Yeah. All, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's going to be like, "Oh, by the way, we have another induction ceremony." <laughs> yeah. of these other people uh, because we need more ceremonies. So, yeah, it's... It, it, I think they... I hope they do that. I don't think... I don't think it may be right away, but if they... It, it may just be... This one wasn't before 1970. If their next year's is also not before 19... Has no one before 1970, now we've had two and that's the impetus. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Well, I think we've done everything we need to do and Evan, you're back next week. I'm recruiting you. For okay. the fictitious rock and roll hall of fame, not sure if you want to do one for the fictitious athlete hall of fame. That's coming out soon too. Sure. Um, if you, do you want to do both at the same time, or just one at a time? Uh, one at a time. The fictitious athlete okay. one because of the contributors and all the other stuff. Uh, I'll sort oh, of like sure. Yeah, that that gets crazy. Yeah, I'll I'll do also uh, another little segue here. Uh, the fictitious rock one's going to have a contributor section soon too. Excellent. I was I was wondering about that. 
Oh. Well, there's two of us who are wondering about that, so good thing we were on the same <laughs> podcast together. Uh, I'm kind of my fingers are crossed for Doctor Johnny Fever. Oh, there you go. I mean, just the turkey drop alone. <laughs> oh my God, they're turkeys! <laughs> I swore I thought they could fly. Uh, they have wings. Um, uh, can I can I just uh, make a plug on the Hall of Fame that does not have anything to do with uh, your site for a Absolutely. second? Absolutely. So starting on the 20th, you can vote in the finals for the National Mascot Hall of Fame. I've been, I've been uh, looking which, at that. Who are you picking? So I am good friends with the former Baltimore Oriole, uh, Bromley Lowe. So when, when the Orioles was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, Bromley was the guy in the suit at the time. Um, so the Oriole bird is up. Um, so I'm just asking everyone to vote for the Oriole bird, even though my beloved Red Sox Wally is up there. Uh, vote for the Oriole bird. That is one of the toughest jobs in sports. Bromley would lose uh, up to 10 to 12 pounds in a 90-degree day in Baltimore in that black suit. Is this the because first class? What? Is this the first class of the Mascot Hall? No, it is not. Uh, the Mascot Hall of Fame has been around. They didn't induct anybody for a while. But, like, some of the ones who are still available who haven't been elected are, like, Yuppie. Um, <laughs> is like, it, how, how is Yuppie? Yuppie is, is, like, first ballot to me. Because um, he was thrown out by, but, in the yeah, game so, by Tom, cause of Tommy Lasorda? I'm sorry? Because he was thrown out of a game? Oh. Uh, you be? No, yes. he, yeah, I mean, he was thrown out again by Tom Lasorda, but he's the only mascot who's been a mascot of two different franchises. Right? The Nationals still use him? No, he was the Can- he's with the Canadians. Oh, that's now. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I always forget about that. Yeah. So, I mean, the extras and the Canadians. So, the ones who are in already, just so you know, are the Philly Fanatic. So, the first year is 2005. It's Philly Fanatic, the Suns Gorilla, and the San Diego Chicken. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we had the Auburn Tiger, Bucky Badger from Wisconsin, Clutch from the Houston Rockets. I don't even know who that is. Uh, the Bear from J- the Jazz Bear from the Jazz, and Casey Wolf from the Chiefs, mm-hmm. and and UD the Blue Hen Chicken from the University of Delaware. Uh, okay. Two thousand and seven, we had the Big Red, the Western Kentucky Funny Hill Topper thing. I was hoping that uh, one was in there. Yeah, uh, Brutus Buckeye from Ohio State, the Coyote from the Spurs, Little Red, who's the um, uh, Nebraska guy, Mr. Met. 2008, we had Rocky from the Denver Nuggets, Slider from the Cleveland Indians, and Smokey from the University of Tennessee. And then there was a breakup until last year. The last year, they put in uh, the Nittany Lion from Penn State, Benny the Bull from the Bulls, Tommy Hawk from the Chicago Blackhawks, and Slugger from the Kansas City Royals. There's still a lot. There's still plenty of good mascots available. When the Nittany um, Lion got inducted, w- did he walk funny? I was worried when I brought him up what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, gl- I'm glad I didn't let you down. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, we, we didn't we didn't touch on Hitler yet, so that's that's a good sign. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the butt so stops here. It's, Hitler it's coming free up, for it's one, coming one up, episode. But, yeah, I just, my buddy Bromley was, was in that suit for a long time. Um, but, yeah, if, if you guys could vote, get the Oriole bird in there. He deserves it. He's one of the best at mascots. There's one of the most recognizable mascots. And that black suit in the 90-degree, 100-degree weather in Baltimore, it's a tough freaking job. So. <laughs> no doubt. He must have some crazy stories. Yeah, he does. Yeah, but he, he actually, when the, when the Oriole Bird got inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, he, re- he retired from that mm. uh, because he's like, I'm not going to do any better. He actually is still a professional mascot, though. Oh. He, uh, he, he is uh, a character named Yojo who does goes to schools up and down the East Coast of the United States doing literacy stuff and things like that. So he's he, no longer the Baltimore Oriole, but he's made his entire career out of being a mascot. He's, in, he's about – he's – Mid forties, forty five, forty six at this point. He's been a mascot since his freshman year of college, essentially. He, the, he, he was he was clawed the American Eagle at American University originally. So. Is the sexual so harassment panda up there? <laughs> he is not. Nor is nor is there a pedo bear from uh, from um, the Conan <laughs> O'Brien show. So 
they, they are not there. Sexual so. harassment, panda. All right, so I think yeah. I think we should end here before I go on to another Hitler rant. So. <laughs> Anyway, dude, I will talk to you next week. Like, I think I think we said they did a good job. Uh, who? So, who is your class? If you had to pick your class out of this, who is it? Before like, we go, like my personal class. Yeah. Who do? You, well, who who would you pick, and who do you think they're going to like? Let's do it that way. Okay. So, I think they'll pick. Uh, I think I think I think we're pretty much on the same page here. I think they're going to do Pat Benatar, the Doobies. Uh, I got a hunch on Kraftwerk, uh, Judas Priest, uh, Todd Rundgren, and Big. Okay, so I think that they are going to do. Uh, let's see. So I agree with you on on uh, Pat Benatar, uh, Judas Priest, uh, Notorious B.I.G., uh, Thin Lizzy, Doobie Brothers, and then we get into uh, probably Todd Rundgren. But I would actually, I think Depeche Mode is getting in because I don't think they have any competition on this thing. So I'll say Depeche Mode. And uh, that leaves Todd Rundgren for the, the special category because one of those other three is getting in. So I'll say Kraftwerk. That's the way they just find him to get in. And Rundgren is, again, on the outside, but he needs uh, with needing uh, the special category, which uh, they may just take out for him because I, they would want him in. Uh, if I could do this myself, I would put in uh, Notorious B.I.G., Judas Priest, Depeche Mode, Pat Benatar, um, Soundgarden. And probably uh, Doobie Brothers and probably Finn Lizzy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, I'd make a bet with you, but I'm already like five pints behind already. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. I never win these things. Well, hey, we we pick sixteen. That's a win in itself. Yeah, well, I'm sending my wife to Chicago, so uh, oh, actually, I should tell her that uh, she owes you like five beers. She try to collect. <laughs> That 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 would be an awkward conversation. Uh, hey, uh, honey, I'm going out to meet someone else's wife, and she's going to get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of be, be a little I, bit strange. Damn it! I got no joke here. I, I'm trying to think of something good, and I got nothing. Anyway, all right. So I'll, I'll talk to you like next week, man. I'm telling you, Josie the Pussycats. They're going to get in. <laughs> well, we'll, we will see. All right. Talk to you soon. Right. Thanks, Evan. All right. Bye. Bye.